Hey everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in California, and in today's video, I am showing you everything that you need to know about Nearpod. So this is one of my favorite online tools to use to create lessons that really engage my students. So on Nearpod, you create a slide deck and then add in all these different interactive features for your students, like open-ended questions, collaborative boards, draw it, and lots of other activities to really make your lessons come to life. This makes it such a great tool to use if you are teaching in the classroom or if you're teaching in an online setting. So on Nearpod, there are two versions. There's a free version and a paid version. So in today's video, I'm going to show you everything that the free version of Nearpod has to offer. So this video is going to be broken into five sections, Nearpod setup, customizing content, customizing games and activities, launching a session, and student reports. Now I will add timestamps so that you can just jump to each section directly. And before we get started, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and please give this video a thumbs up. That's one of the best ways to support my channel and it allows even more teachers to discover these videos. Now let's go ahead and head over to nearpod.com. So to start with Nearpod, you're going to head over to nearpod.com. And then if you're a teacher, you'll click sign up for your free teacher account. You will then select that you're a teacher and then choose an existing account to sign up with or sign up with your school email. Since I already have an account, I'm going to click log in with Google and it will log in with my Google account. Before I start even creating lessons, I'm going to adjust some of my settings to make them work for my class. So I'm going to go up to my profile picture up here and click lesson settings. So for the most part, I keep the default settings, but there are some that I wanna make sure I turn on. So as an overview here, you can enable student names to autofill when they join a lesson. I am going to choose to turn on the immersive reader because that makes it so that the text will actually be read to your students if they're on a slide with text. So that would be really helpful if you're using a student paced lesson and they're working on the Nearpod lesson independently. You can also enable student notes if you want your students to annotate the slides during the lesson. Then you have show quiz and multiple choice question results in student paced mode. I do prefer to enable collaborative board for student paced lessons so students can still see each other's responses even if they're completing the lesson on their own at a different time from each other. Require student responses and prevent skipping so students must respond in their student paced lessons before they move on to the next slide. That's another option I like to have turned on if I am assigning this as a student paced lesson. Now when it comes to actually planning out those lessons, you have a few options here. Near Pod has a library that you can choose from. You can edit already created lessons, or you can just create your own lesson directly in Nearpod. So one way is to access that Nearpod library. This is where you can explore lessons that have already been created. There are literally thousands of lessons you can explore. So you're able to just type in your topic that you're looking for, including full lessons, or if you're just looking for videos or activities, you can filter it with those options. You can filter also by standard, including Common Core and Next Generation Science Standards, or by selecting the state that you teach in. You can also select which subject and grade level you're looking for to filter it even further. You are able to preview each lesson by clicking preview. And then once you find a lesson that works for you, you'll add it to your Nearpod library. So I really recommend first searching that Nearpod library for a topic that you're looking for because that can really save you a lot of time and you don't need to go and reinvent the wheel when you don't have to. So you can also edit the pre-made lessons to make them work for you if there's some parts of it that you wanna change. So if there are any slides you wanna delete or add to the lesson, this can really save you a lot of time so that you don't have to completely start from scratch but still customize it to how you want it. And then the final way is to create your entire lesson directly into Nearpod. So to do this, you're going to go to the top here and click create. Now notice there are a few options here. So you can either click lesson to create your entire lesson, including content slides and videos and activities, or you have an option to create an interactive video lesson to stand on its own, where you can add questions within a video for a really interactive experience for your students. And then activity allows you to make a matching pair activity, a time to climb, which is a game, or a draw activity for a standalone activity for your students to play. And then finally, right here, we have the Google Slides option. So when you open this up, it will take you to your Google Slide presentations. And this is where you would be using Nearpod as an add-on within your Google Slides. However, that does require the paid upgrade to use that Google Slide add-on. Now, since both the interactive videos and activities can be added to a full Nearpod lesson, I'll be showing you what it would look like to create an entire lesson and add in all those features. So I'm going to click Create Lesson. I will then give it a title, select the grade level and the subject, and I'm ready to go. 
So now you're ready to really add in all the content for your lessons. So this is where you're going to add in materials and resources and some interactive elements for your students to really explore and make meaning with whatever topic you're teaching in your lesson. So of course there are lots of options to go through. So I'm going to go through each feature to show the different types of content that you can add to your lesson. So the first option here is adding a slide. So this is to create a content slide with text and images, GIFs. You can add a voice recording for audio and add in videos, just like you would with a Google slide or a PowerPoint presentation. You can even just upload your own Google slide presentation or a PDF or PowerPoint that you already have. And that will be part of your Nearpod lesson. If you already have created a lot of your own PowerPoints or Google slide presentations, then I really recommend just uploading those directly into Nearpod. And then you can add in all those interactive features to go along with those slides. The classic slides is similar with additional styles and layouts, but just not as many features as the one in beta. For example, if I was making a lesson about the water cycle, then I'm just going to add in the information here that I want my students to learn. The next is the video. This is an awesome way to make an interactive video experience for your students. So this gives you the ability to add in an already interactive video from the Nearpod library, or you can upload your own video or find one on YouTube that you want to add in. And then once you have the video you want to use, you're able to add multiple choice and open-ended questions throughout the video. So as your students are watching the video, it will pause and allow you to check for understanding and they would need to answer a question. You can also trim the video to make it shorter if you only want to show part of that video. Next one is web content. So for this, you're just going to add in a website URL if you want your students to explore a specific website as they're learning the content. Nearpod 3D is awesome. Students can rotate and zoom in and explore all these different objects. I think this would be great if you are teaching a science lesson and you could explore different parts of a cell or if you want to take a closer look at some ancient architecture for a history lesson. There's definitely a lot in the library to explore for science and history. The next one are the FET simulations. So this was already a website I love to use with my students for science for interactive virtual simulations and so now you can just embed it right in your Nearpod lesson. So they have an entire library of the different simulations organized really well with different topics. So for example, in fifth grade, I've always used the states of matter simulation when teaching phase changes. And then as my students are going through the Nearpod lesson, they'll actually be able to interact with that simulation. The simulation will automatically open up and your students are able to interact with that. The virtual reality field trip allows your students to explore different parts of the globe for a virtual field trip experience. The BBC video includes a lot of informative videos on lots of different topics around the world. The next one is Sway. So Sway is an interactive slide deck for your students to engage with the content. So there are already a lot of pre-created Sways for you to choose from, or if you already have a Microsoft Office account, you can create your own Sway and then add it into your Nearpod lesson. So that would just be like adding another outside presentation into your Nearpod lesson, which you would then be using Nearpod to add in open-ended questions and checking for understanding activities. For the slideshow, you're able to add lots of different images that will work as a slideshow for your students to look through. I like to use this to spark some curiosity about the topic that we're going to be learning that day. For audio, you're able to add in an audio clip if you need to. And then the last one here is the PDF viewer, which you can upload a PDF, which might be really helpful if you have an article that you want your students to read. So there really are so many options to add in content in different ways for your students to explore that topic that you're teaching. And as they're exploring that topic and taking in all that content, you probably want to check for understanding and give your students some opportunities to practice what they're learning. So that's where all the games and activities are going to come in, which I'll go over next. So now it's time to add in all the games and activities throughout that Nearpod lesson to make sure that your students are actually understanding what they're learning. One game that you can put into your Nearpod lesson is Time to Climb. So this is a really great option to add in at the end of your lesson for a fun way for your students to practice what they've learned. So this is a game where you add in different multiple choice questions for your students, and then they're answering those questions and racing to the top of a mountain. So that makes it really fun for them. Nearpod also added in an activity bank, so you can actually search time to climbs that have already been created on your topic. So again, a great time saver. The next is open-ended questions. So you can add in open-ended questions for your students throughout the lesson. You can just type in the question, you can add a picture to go with it if you want to, and then students are just going to type in their responses as you go through the lesson, or you can enable student audio and students could actually record their voice to answer the question. That might be a really good option if you're doing it as a student-paced lesson where students are 
completing the Nearpod lesson independently. For matching pairs, this is another great standalone practice activity. You can create your own or you can choose from the activity bank. So students are going to click on matching pairs to review what they've learned. I really like to use matching pairs for vocabulary. This next one is a quiz. So usually at the end of a lesson, I will like to include a short multiple choice quiz as an exit ticket and students are going to instantly see how they did. Once students are done with the quiz, they'll immediately be able to see how they did on that quiz. And it's a good way just to summarize what they've learned from that lesson. So the next tool is Flipgrid, which is again, one of my favorite tools to use. So for this one though, you do need to have a Flipgrid account already created. And so to do that, you will want to head over to Flipgrid and create a free teacher account. So once you've created an assignment in Flipgrid, you're going to take the Flipgrid teacher URL and the student URL, and then you're going to paste those into the slide for Nearpod. This is going to create a new Flipgrid lesson slide in your Nearpod. Now your students are going to be able to access that Flipgrid and record their short little videos directly in the Nearpod lesson. This next one is Draw It. So on the Draw It slide, you can upload images or PDFs for your students to directly draw on. This works great for students to label diagrams, or if you want to upload a PDF and have students highlight key details from a document, or it could be a blank canvas, and then you can just add in directions for your students to draw on their own to answer a question. This is one feature that I do recommend setting the timer in that upper right hand corner, because in my experience, students may spend a little too much time with their drawing. So it's good to give them a heads up on about how much time they have to sketch out their drawing. So from the student view, this is what it's going to look like. Students can choose different colors to draw or to highlight. They can even add in their own pictures on top of their picture if they want to, or if they prefer to type, they can add in text too and erase anything that they've added onto their picture. And then when they're done, they'll just submit it and turn it in and you'll be able to see it on the teacher side. So a couple ways that I really like to use the draw it feature is uploading a picture where students need to label a diagram. Another way is to upload a PDF of some text. Maybe we're working with some text evidence and I want them to underline key details. Then they can actually highlight that PDF in the moment and I can see how they're doing with that. So from the main page of creating your lesson, you can also add any slide or image to your lesson. And then if you decide that you want it to actually be a draw it slide, you can convert it to a draw it slide by selecting that slide and then clicking convert to draw it. And then it will be all ready to use. The collaborate board is a great one for whole class discussions. So you can ask your students a question and they're able to respond on a post-it with text or images. There's lots of different styles and their classmates are actually able to see their responses and heart each other's responses, which of course they really like doing to show support for each other. When teaching the lesson, you can either have students post responses right away, or you can adjust the setting during the lesson to allow you to have to approve responses before they're actually posted. This is a great tool for having whole class discussions so that everyone has a chance to actually share their thoughts and ideas and see each other's responses. The poll feature allows you to add in a poll for your students and share their responses to their class if you want to. So for example, if teaching about seasons, I may ask a quick question of what is your favorite season. Another way I like to use the poll feature is polling my students at the beginning and the end of the Nearpod lesson and just checking to see how they feel about how much they understand that topic already. So at the end of the lesson, they're really reflecting on their feelings about how they feel they understood the material for that. Day. The next is the fill in the blanks. So I really love using the fill in the blanks for vocabulary and academic language. So there are different font and color options you can choose from. You can then write the sentences or paragraph using the words, and then you're going to select which words you want to appear in the word bank. So from the student view, they're just going to drag and drop the words to fill in the blanks. So this last one is the memory test. So this is a game of memory where you add in images or text for students to find the matching pairs. So you can select six, eight or 12 images for the grid size. And then you can search for images, upload your own or write your own text. Once you find the images you want, then you're going to drag them into the cards. You can also have an option to add in a final question about the matching pairs once they find them by clicking that final question and then clicking next and typing in your question and selecting the answer. So from the student view, they're going to be all mixed up and then they're going to play the game until they find all the matching pairs. So those are all the different interactive features that you can add into your lessons. I know there is a lot for you to explore there. So at the end, when I'm all done creating the lesson, I always like to click preview to go through the slides and make sure it has all the pieces I wanted included and then you can always duplicate and delete slides if you need to. And then once you are finally all done, you're going to click save and exit. 
So now you chose the lesson that you want to teach or you're done creating your Nearpod lesson and it's time to actually launch a session and teach it to your students. From the Nearpod homepage, that's where you're going to see all of your lessons. So when you hover over the lesson, there's two modes to choose from, live participation and student paste. Live participation would be a really good option if you're teaching this lesson in the classroom with your students or online during a Zoom call and you want to actually go through that lesson together with your students, which makes it nice to actually be able to pause for discussion and do a reteach or clarify a misunderstanding in the lesson with your whole class. Student pace would be a good option if you want to actually have your students complete the Nearpod lesson on their own as independent work, or you can assign it as homework and they can complete it at another time. So I'm going to select live participation, which will start a new session. Students can go to join.nearpod.com or in their app and enter the code. They will then be prompted to type in their name. You can also copy the link or share it to one of your learning management systems. My students have Nearpod bookmarks, so it makes it really easy to say that we're going to do a Nearpod lesson and then they just need to click their Nearpod link and it will jump right over to Nearpod and then they just type in that code. So now as a teacher, you're going to be controlling the slides and progress through the lesson. And then your student slides are going to automatically change when you move one. Now notice up here, there's a few little tools you can use when giving your lesson. Right up here, you can open up an interactive whiteboard in the moment. So this might be really helpful if, for example, you're teaching a math lesson and you wanna clarify a misunderstanding or you want to do additional modeling in the lesson that you feel your students will benefit from. And then whatever you're doing on that whiteboard, that's going to automatically show up on your student screens too. You can also add a new activity slide in the moment if you need to. And then you can also switch to student view. So this can be really helpful if you're actually projecting the presentation to your students while you're teaching it, or if you just wanna follow along and see what your students are seeing. Because during a live participation lesson as a teacher, your slide is actually going to look different than your students because you're seeing all of your students' responses in live time popping up onto your screen. So that's not necessarily something that you want to project to your class when presenting. Instead, showing that student view might be more helpful. Now along the bottom here you can see how many participants are in the session and you can also choose to show or hide student names. Depending on the type of lesson I usually like to keep student names hidden for student privacy. I like to hide student names so that when we're doing a collaborative board students might feel a little more comfortable sharing their thoughts and ideas with their classmates and I always tell them they can sign their little sticky note with their name if they want to. Now as you go through the slides student responses are going to automatically appear on your screen. So say I ask an open-ended question then I I'm going to see all my students' responses. If I did a draw it, I'm going to see all my student drawings. So what I really love about this is you can select a student response to actually share to the rest of the class. And then it's automatically going to appear on their classmates' screens too. Then when you're all done with the lesson for the day, then you're going to go to the top and click Nearpod and select End Session. If you don't actually finish your session, then you are able to resume the session later on and then your students are just going to rejoin with the code. So student pace lessons work pretty much the same way. So for student pace lessons, you're going to click student paste, and then you are able to share the code or link with your students. This time though, they're going to be given a time frame to actually complete the lesson. And if you didn't already adjust it in settings, you can select require student responses and prevent skipping. That way they can't actually move on in the lesson until they've answered those questions. So now since students are actually doing the lesson by themselves, then they're going to just click through those lesson slides on their own rather than have you control it. They get to just go at their own speed. One of the main reasons I really love using Nearpod is because as you're teaching that lesson, especially in the live format, you're able to see all of your students' responses right away. So that makes it really great for you to actually see what they're understanding and if you need to address any misconceptions, clarify any misunderstandings, maybe do another example for your students or have a class discussion in the moment. And then at the end of the lesson, you can actually save all of your student reports. So you can keep all of that data you collected from that lesson. So to do this, you can just go up to the top and select reports, and this will email you student reports from the lesson. Another way to do this is from the homepage. So when you hover over your lesson, you can also click these three little dots here and click reports, and this will open the post session reports. Now you're able to actually see each student's participation and responses to every single question of the Nearpod lesson. You can look at the overall class summary of student participation, and then you can just click through each interactive feature that you use to see every student response. So for example, this is what it would look like for a poll question, an open-ended question, and you can see all of their answers, a draw question, and then you can just open up a student to look at each student's work, 
matching pairs activity, and even open up the collaborative board that was done with your class. If you wanna save this, you can go to the top here and click download, and then you're able to download the session report as a PDF or a CSV file. So that really makes it a great way to collect that student data and use this as formative assessments. As always, thank you so much for watching. I feel that is everything you need to know to make the most out of Nearpod with your students this year. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for all my newest teacher tips, and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.